Hello, welcome to this brief video where I want to share 10 reasons why I think Asana is the best project management tool out there. Now, if you've been following my videos or my blog for a little while, you'll know that Asana is my favorite task and project management app out there. Um, I've been using it for a number of years now and I absolutely love it. It's probably my favorite productivity tool for staying organized and, and getting things done. Now, of course, in the interest of kind of self-improvement and improving my processes, I do look at other task management tools. I've, I've experimented with a couple in the past, not all of them. There are obviously lots of really good options out there and I try not to get too bogged down with trying lots of tools and sort of wasting time on these seemingly productive tasks. But I have tried a few and uh, I always come back to Asana. Um, I'm very invested in Asana by now as well, but I always come back to it for a few key reasons. So there are 10 reasons I'd like to share why I think Asana is the best project management tool out there. So number one, is you can add tasks to multiple projects. This is a simple feature, but something that gets overlooked and allows you to do some really cool things. So for example, here I have a task. I've actually just created it on my task list at the moment, and I can add it to a project. So I can add it to my business project. I can even um, put that into a section if I like. And now I'm gonna actually add it to a second project. So I could add it to, let's say, sales. And now I'm going to put that in, I don't know, um, speaking. And so now this task is accessible from these two different projects. So if I go to my business project on the left here, uh, I can see here it is. This is a task. Here it is in the business project. And if I click on the sales project, scrolling down, here it is here. This is a task. So this isn't a duplicate of the task. It's the same task. It's just accessible from two different places. So if I make a change to this task, if I add a subtask, change the description, mark it as done, it's gonna be reflected in both of these places. Now, this is pretty simple, but it allows you to do some pretty cool things. First of all, it means that you can organize tasks in multiple places. For example, if this task is relevant for the business and sales project, it's just useful to have it accessible in two different places so that you can be a bit more organized. The other reason is that um, you can create and use what, what I call sort of summary projects. So on the left here, I've got my kind of primary projects, but then I have this Kanban board, and I'm gonna talk more about boards later. And uh, I add tasks to here, from other projects. So here we are, hire a virtual assistant, something I'm working on right now. This is in the business project, but I've also added it to my Kanban project. And so I use this summary project to, to kind of prioritize lots of different tasks from all of these different projects. And I move them through these stages, planning, in progress, waiting, and complete. And it means that I just sort of, I, I only try and have a few things in progress at once. And this is made possible by that very simple feature of having tasks in multiple projects. So that is the first key feature, um, which I really love. It's actually one of my favorite features of Asana. Second key feature is that you can communicate right within tasks. So this is great when you're working in a team. I use Asana mainly with my wife and hopefully with my virtual assistant in the future. But uh, yeah, you have this comment section down the bottom. And so this is where most of the communication happens in Asana. And it means when you fully invest yourself or your company in Asana, you can reduce a lot of internal email because the, communica the communication happens right here in the comments. Why is that good? Well, email can very easily get off topic. It's not always clear who's responsible for what and what actually needs to be done. In Asana, you've got the assignee, you've got a due date, and the task, if written well, you know, it's, uh, it's action orientated. And so the communication is always brought back to getting the work done, getting this task complete. And it's, it keeps the conversation tied to actions where email can get off topic very easily. So I can write a comment in here and I can post it. And any followers to the task, actually, it's just me at the moment, but any followers would get notified I can even loop in other people to this task. I can type someone in, um, I can tag them and uh, add them to the task uh, via a comment as well. So this conversation area is really useful for managing communication within team, lowering internal email, email and just uh, you know keeping the conversation to, tied to the actual work. So that's the second key feature. Third key feature is that you can customize projects with custom fields. Now this is a premium feature, but a very useful feature at that. So for example, if I flick over to my content calendar, this is where I plan my the content for my blog. So here we are, 10 reasons why Asana is the best project management tool out there. Uh, post I'm working on right now, video I'm recording. And I have this, this field called status. This is a field that I've set up specially for this project. And if I go to the settings, manage custom fields, 
here it is. So I can edit this field. I've called it status, and I've got some drop-down options that I can um, that I can use within this project. I can create another custom field if I want, uh, create a brand new one, and I could set it up as a text or numerical field as well. And so what this allows me to do is I can add unique bits of information to my project. So in this case, I'm tracking the status of my uh, blog post. I have other um, custom fields, for example, if I flick to my business project, where I'm actually tracking the amount of time I expect a task to take. So if I click on this project, hours to complete, I put in a number, so 0.25 is 15 minutes. It's just a nice way of kind of budgeting how long I want to spend on a task. And actually, if I click on a couple of these numbers, you can even see that Asana adds up the values. So it says 0.6 total. So just a little extra feature when you use those numerical fields. And again, this is a very flexible feature. When you start using it, it allows you to do some pretty powerful things. So custom fields is a really nice feature of Asana. Then we've got posting project updates. So for example, if I go over to my Kanban project, I don't think I've actually posted any updates in this project, but when you're working in Teams, it's quite nice to um, to keep everyone sort of updated on how the project is going. So we have this on the progress tab, the update status. I could set the status of this project, and I could say, hey, uh, this, this, uh, this project is going well. Good job. And uh, I, can, I can notify certain people. Uh, for example, I could add Haley. I can add her in, and I can set the status. And now uh, everyone will, will be notified of this status update. So it's a really nice way for project owners, managers to update their team, uh, or, or for, for workers who are working on projects to update their managers on how projects are going. You've also got this nice progress chart down here, which shows you the difference between the number of tasks created and uh, what's been completed. So that's a nice little... Um, nice little bonus you've got down there. But yeah, the project updates, I haven't seen this in too many project management tools out there. Um, really like this little feature. And if you do use Asana on your own, I actually sometimes use these project updates almost like writing a journal entry just to myself, just to kind of record how, how different projects are progressing. Okay. Number five is see what's next with my tasks. So here we are actually, we're in the my tasks screen right now. The my tasks page summarizes all of the different tasks that are assigned to you from all of the different projects. So tasks that are assigned to me from the business project, products, sales, content, they all appear in here. As well as if I create a new task for myself, uh, this is a task. This is now, you can see up here, it's private to me. So this is also a place where I can kind of keep my personal to do's um, or, or, you know, um, private to do's, my own little to-do list as well. And uh, this, uh, the My Task page is, is particularly useful because when you have due dates on your tasks, Asana can kind of tell you what to work on. So, for example, when I, um, when I create a new task for myself, let's just create a new one up here. Uh, okay, let's create that task. You see it's, it's uh, this new section, new tasks, uh, this section has been created. So and it's got this blue dot next to it to show that it's a new task, kind of like a new email. Now what I could do is I could actually say, you know what, this is not due for a while, it's uh, due at the end of the month. So what I might do is now click on that dot and put it in one of these three sections. So because it's not due for a while, uh, I'm gonna put it in the later section. So now, if we scroll down to the bottom, if we look at the later section, I can expand it. It's, it's collapsed by default, but I can expand it. And I can then see um, all of the tasks in that later section. So here it is on the 31st of March. Now, uh, a week away from being uh, from falling due, a week away from this date, the task will appear in the upcoming section. So if I move it into upcoming, you'll see this is where it would show. It would show at the top of this section, uh, which this section shows all the tasks coming up in the next seven days. So you can see here I've got tasks for tomorrow, Wednesday, Friday, and so on. And uh, I've actually created a few subsections here, things that I'm waiting on, things that like next actions, quick little things I can do, um, my tasks for this, this week and then the following week. So I actually, I will manually sort these tasks, but uh, you don't have to do that. You can just rely on Asana moving the tasks through these sections for you. And then on the day it falls due, on the 31st of March, it'll appear in your today list. So what this means is that uh, on a given day, you can open up Asana and all of the tasks to you today 
will automatically populate this today section so you can just open up Asana and get right into that first task on your today list. And it means you don't have to go hunting through projects or scanning your list to find what to do. Asana kind of just puts it right in front of you and says, hey, this is what you need to do today. So seeing what's next with my tasks is a really great feature of Asana, probably my one of my favorite um, features. And this page that I'm on right now, the My Tasks, this is probably the page that you'll be on that you'll use the most as you're using Asana. It's where you kind of prioritize your tasks, you see what you need to work on next. And other project management tools have similar features. They, you know, they show you the next seven days, but these sections today, upcoming later, these sections are what I think make um, Asana particularly powerful, is it moves them through the sections for you. So that's number five. Number six, uh, six is you can stay organized with sections. So you've already seen I've created these uh, headings here. These are called sections in my, my tasks. You can also create them in projects as well. So you've got sections. I've created planning, analysis systems, and so on. And these sections are a nice visual way of breaking up the work. I've tried other task management tools, and uh, I think Todoist is the one that comes to mind. You have projects, and you cr can create a long list of tasks, but there's no way of really visually breaking up the work into logical areas. And um, I, really like, I really like the sections for just kind of organizing the tasks into different areas based on how you like to work. And so for my content project, for example, instead of having kind of areas, I've actually got sections for month, so I can organize content by month, and I'm actually sorting everything chronologically here. So the sections are a really powerful way to just kind of stay a bit more organized in Asana. Again, very simple feature, but something I don't see in a lot of task management tools. So that's a really simple but very useful feature of Asana. And then expanding on that, you can then break tasks into subtasks and sections. So you can see I'm inside this task right now, record and edit video. This is what I'm doing right now. And I've got a bunch of subtasks. These are the points that I want to talk about. And so using subtasks is a really great way to break down the work. And one of the most common mistakes I see people make when they first get started with Asana is they go a bit crazy creating lots and lots of projects on the left here for all the little kind of things they have going on. And it's much better, I believe, to keep this project list much more consolidated and concise. I've actually kind of used these projects almost as areas of my business, you know, business, uh, sales, content. These are sort of quite broad projects, really. And then I use the sections and tasks and subtasks to actually break down the tasks a lot more. So, for example, I'm actually in on the third level here. If I actually click back up a level, you can see this is the actual task that I'm doing, which is the content. I then have a bunch of subtasks. This is the subtask I'm working on right now, record and edit, so I can click into this. And here we are, these are the points that I want to talk about. So you can see I, you can get quite granular in Asana. And the uh, other useful thing you can do here is you can use sections to further organize your subtasks. So for example, I could create um, a number of sections to just kind of break up these tasks even more. And this is one of the best ways that you can avoid that problem of having too many projects is by using the subtasks and sections effectively to organize everything in a logical way. Okay. Number seven. Number eight, set up projects as a list or a board. So uh, traditionally, Asana has always allowed you to create projects as lists, which is the classic view. I actually really like the list view. Uh, it's very clean and simple. You can see a lot of tasks at once, but you do have the option to set up a project as a board as well. Very similar to how Trello works and Trello users who are maybe thinking of switching to Asana. This is a great feature that you'll, you'll really enjoy. And uh, you can see I've got columns here for planning in progress, waiting, complete. Boards are great as well for planning ideas and brainstorming. So I have an ideas project of different um, sort of products that I might make in the future. And they're great as well if you have lots of attachments and images on your projects. I don't have many, uh, but I'll scroll down here and find an example for you. Keep going. Here we go, ah. create upside down homepage. So you can see this image here, this image is actually attached to the task. Here it is, and it shows as a thumbnail on the task. So if you have tasks with lots of images, using the board, there's another one. Using the board can be a really nice way of just getting a bit of more of a visual perspective of your work. Um, but you do have the ability to set up an, um, uh, um, projects as lists or boards. And right now, as of today, you can't switch them. So once you set it up as a board, that's it. You can't switch it. But 
my understanding is that Asana will be releasing a feature soon. Maybe even when you're watching this video, that feature will be out where you will be able to actually switch between board and list view. Uh, but there we are. That's, the, that's another really great feature. Again, very useful for Trello users who are thinking of switching. You can set up lists as a board. Another really simple thing, really simple UX user experience, um, kind of not really a feature, but I guess design design well design feature is that you can see everything at once. So for example, if I click on this task, uh, if I close that again, my, here's my here's my um, project. I can see my description, and then if I click on a task, the pro the task uh, pane appears on the right hand side. So I can still see my project. I can still see all of my tasks, and I can click around and I can still see them all without having to close this window. And it sounds simple, but I've used other project management tools where when you click on the task, the task kind of fills the whole page, a bit like how it does here. See, if I click here, the task kind of fills the whole page. I have to now click to close before I can look at another one. And that's, I guess, like a slight limitation of the boards. But at least in the list view, when you click on a task, you can still see the entire project and you can click around and you can you can even bulk select. I can hold my control key. I can select multiple tasks at once. I can change who they're assigned to and dates and things. This is a really simple thing, a really simple design feature, but something that's incredibly useful and just makes using the app that much quicker and more, more satisfying. So there we are. That is, uh, oops. That is number nine. And number 10 is the fact that Asana, if you're lucky enough, will, when you complete a task, uh, give you a little celebration in the form of a unicorn or a narwhal or a yeti or something. So here we are. Let's see if I can get one to appear. Asana's brand is pretty fun. And this is obviously, this doesn't really serve any productivity uh, purpose. It's not really going to help you other than the fact that maybe the little celebrations uh, kind of keep you motivated to complete lots of tasks. So hopefully, if I click a subtask here, uh, they don't appear all the time, and I hope I can get one to appear. Uh-oh, running out of subtasks. Oh dear, okay, let's try again. There we go, there's a unicorn. <laughs> so again, they, they don't show up all the time, and uh, it doesn't really serve a huge productivity doesn't give you any huge productivity benefit, but when you do get that little unicorn or narwhal kind of appear on the uh, screen, it's pretty um, it's pretty satisfying, and, and it's going to help you to, I think, maybe maybe motivate you to get a little bit more done. But yeah, I mean, the, it, it just communicates. Asana is a very fun brand. You've seen the colors as well. You can customize the colors of your project. I've got I just use kind of primary colors to customize my projects. I don't use any particular color scheme here, although in my content project, you may have noticed I've color coded the status. So it goes from red, orange, and green. So it's sort of a traffic light, light system. And uh, you can you can customize the colors of tags as well. So bugs and things. And maybe you want to come up with a color scheme where certain types of projects, maybe all, uh, maybe all client projects, like projects you're working on for clients, maybe they're all blue and all kind of business admin projects are all red or something like that. So you can customize the color of projects and it just makes the, the uh, experience of using Asana a bit more fun and it might serve a little benefit for you for helping you to identify projects. But uh, there we are. Those are the top 10 features why I think Asana is the best project management tool out there. If you have any questions, comments about your use of Asana, how to use Asana, please feel free to leave a comment under this video. And uh, thanks very much for watching.